Hey, what's up, Metal Heavy Music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and I've got five more albums that you don't want to miss from the month of September. Budapest-based extreme groove metal crew Omega Diatribe following up the excellent Trinity with Metanoia. Now, I was very curious going into Metanoia. Their previous album, Trinity, ended up being one of my favorite albums of 2018, so the hype was real. But things got even more interesting upon watching the video for lead single, Parallel. It was nice to see them having a budget for this, by the way, this time around. In addition to returning to comparisons to living sacrifice in the grooves, drumming, and always bleak and even somewhat sorrowful aesthetic, this track also found me making new post-metal connections with its more methodical, atmospheric approach. Even Ulcerate's slower interludes come to mind in these labyrinthian detours of ominous bass rumble. The clean singing, albeit brief, was also a bit of a shift from the band's normally always-on, always-aggro approach on previous efforts. I was curious if the rest of the album would see a similar shift, and the answer is yes and no. While there are other moments on the album like Death Touch, Metanoia, and Coronal Mass Injection with similar directions, there's still plenty straight-up Meshuggah-esque violence to get your motor running. You Can't Save Me, Global Fire, and especially Mirror Neuron have zero hesitation when it comes to abusing the listener with their genty riffs and irreverent vocal delivery. There's even some sick wah effect on the latter that reminded me of early Soulfly. <laughs> With this newfound duality, Metanoia ends up being a much more dynamic record than Trinity, and even though it's not quite as consistently heavy from start to finish, the high points end up making a far more craterous impact thanks to the softer counterparts. In the future, I'd like to see Omega Diatribe further meld these two different approaches into a more cohesive whole. At times, the album feels a little too ABAB when I'd be more impressed by kind of an ebb and flow within the songs. So ultimately, has Omega Diatribe lived up to the high hopes I had for this follow-up? For the most part, I'd say yes. I'm not sure yet if I love it as much as I did Trinity, but either way, this is a top-tier album for 2020, and one that I hope garners further notice for a band that has been too long lingering in the shadows. Austin, Texas-based melodic death doom metal band Hinayana channeling Insomnium with their new EP Death of the Cosmic via Napalm Records. Now, I had not previously heard of Hinayana prior to being served this EP, but apparently they've been kicking around since, like, 2014. And I have to say, after listening to Death of the Cosmic, I'm definitely interested in checking out their previous material. The closest point of comparison for other newcomers out there is definitely Insomnium, with palpable melancholy dripping from every guitar riff and deep, foreboding death vocals. Hinayana occupy a very similar and moody niche within the melodic death metal genre. The compositions are a plodding, methodical ebb and flow of sorrowful valleys and epic, almost equilibrium-esque peaks, aided by the always emotionally stirring synths. And pushing this big mood to its absolute zenith, the late, great Nature Gangenbeigel of Tenger Cavalry also makes a posthumous appearance on Cold Conception with the haunting bowing of his Morn Kerr. Rest in peace, Nature. Your unique take on the folk genre will be sorely missed. Throw in some killer guitar solos and massive sounding drums thanks in part to the mastering of Swallow the Sun's Juho Reha, and this is easily among the most expansive EPs of the year. Now, I do feel like throwing in a faster part here and there a la While We Sleep would add some additional dynamics and aid in the overall pacing. 
Not too much, just enough to offer like a 4 to 1 counterpoint to the slower stuff. But again, if you enjoy the more brooding side of melodic death metal in bands like Insomnium and Catatonia, do yourself a favor and add Hinayana to your list. Death of the Cosmic is truly powerful stuff that makes its around 25 minute runtime feel like a full length feature. Hey, sorry to interrupt the video, but if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, I just wanted to remind you that you should hit that subscribe button down below. Plenty more videos for you to explore on the channel. And while Florida metalcore band Nomadic, refusing to be ignored in a highly competitive year for the genre with new album Euphoria. There are so many high points on this album that easily rival the songwriting of bigger names this year like Bury Tomorrow and Make Them Suffer. In fact, with its classic palm-muted riffing and transitions to blissful, soaring choruses, the appropriately titled opener Euphoria is one of the best metalcore tracks I think I've heard this year. It honestly knocks pretty much any track from even August Burns Red Guardians completely off the chart. But arguably even more impressive are the proggier tracks like I Would Get Lost in You Forever If You'd Let Me, which also managed to bite at the heels of Fallujah with their technical traversals of the fretboard, drifting ethereal atmosphere, and deeper death metal vocals. There are actually quite a few of these softer, more transcendental moments on Euphoria as well, making for an album that deeply contrasts its light and dark side. It's precisely this dynamic that makes those tribal sounding toms and deathcore snarls sound all the more menacing on Legacy. Well, I grow myself. It's also nice to hear Courtney LaPlante make an appearance on You're Making a Joke with Your Friends and Suddenly You Realize You're Going to Die. And yes, that is a full song title and get used to those because that is the norm on this album. On a more critical side, I do feel that the album pads out its runtime just a little bit, especially towards the end. The last three songs in particular all seem to convey similar ideas and might have been more powerful if condensed into a single, more concise closing statement. If you ask me, the violin-infused sorrow of Slash Slash, or however you <laughs> want to describe the name of that track, seems like the perfect conclusion, and while solid, Blue Jay just kind of muddles the landing. My disappointment is immeasurable. I know I've said it a lot this year, but for good reason. 2020 is absolutely killing it with great metalcore releases, and Euphoria deserves your respect for continuing the trend. It would be easy to miss Nomadic amidst the torrent given their lower profile, but I implore you not to let that happen by sharing the album with everyone you know. It's even name your price on Bandcamp, so really, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Danish hardcore band Eyes unleashing raw fury on debut album Underperformer via Indisciplinarian. Now I have to start by saying, not since the arms ferocious untitled have I heard such unbridled vitriol across a single album. It's not just the chaotic convergy riffs and absolutely battering drumming. It's also the absolutely maniacal vocals. This dude takes the hardcore rulebook and tosses it into the fucking toilet. Yes, we get the genre's classic barks and even some kind of daughters-esque wails of sorrow and kind of speak singing, but add to that blackened wretches, blechs, and death metal snarls and everything in between, really. <laughs> Perhaps above all else, it's this constantly shifting screamscape of dementedness that keeps every second feeling fresh and helps the album really stand out too from the waves of pretenders. I really just can't get over it. Like I listen to this guy and the constant shifts between the different styles that he's going through and it just puts me in awe and also just wants me to put my fist through the fucking drywall. I've heard a lot of amazing hardcore this year, but even so the infectiously pounding drums and irreverent howls of surf 
refuse to be lost in the maelstrom. Really, these tracks grab you by the nape of the neck like an unruly dog and rub your face in the filth. Honestly, my only critique of this album is that nobody is talking about this band, and that is just a tragedy. Every song is a banger, every moment is something to share at the water cooler, or better yet, Underperformer is the type of album best acknowledged in the office with a subtle Fight Club style nod, our suits contrasting black eyes, blood stains, and broken noses. Who you were in Fight Club is not who you were in the rest of the world. A guy came to Fight Club for the first time, his ass was a wad of cookie dough. I already saw people sleeping on the lead single Distance, which I've included a few video clips in here on that and did a full reaction of it. It really is fun to see the juxtaposition of these intense, gnarly performances with their just deadpan delivery. <laughs> But seriously, if you all pass up on this album, there's truly no justice in the underground. Virginia melodic black and death metal band for Token, mashing together Dissection with Karish Angren on their new album Ruin via Prosthetic Records. Now, For Token was introduced to me as a melodic death metal band, but I challenge you to listen to the ominous opening tremolo lines of bewildering duress and not think of Storm of the Light's Bane. Between this, the raspy vocal style, and ghostly atmosphere of the synths, this very much feels like a black metal record that just so happens to have some Gothenburg-y elements attached to it. And speaking of the vocals, the devil may care way in which Dan Cooley spits each syllable of the mythology-ridden lyrics also gives me some mild Karish Angren vibes, tempered once more with classic bands like Dissection and Sacramentum. But the real star of the show here is the guitar work. Especially on the first two tracks, Steve Redman absolutely kills it with malicious tremolos, soaring harmonies, and chugging melodic death metal palm muting. My personal favorite, The Retribution, also has a part just after the three minute mark that would make Iron Maiden blush with its thrash and heavy metal inspired triplets transitioning into a jaw dropping harmonized solo. Pair with this Steve's equally exemplary work on the orchestral compositions and the addition of Triptychon, Hate Eternal, and Ex Obscura, just to name a few of his other projects, drummer Hans Grossman, and you can expect a serious thrill ride of accomplished musicianship. There are only two things that ultimately pull this album's score down just a little bit for me, song length and some of the vocal choices. The former is a simple case of just biting off more than the band can chew. As impressive as many of the compositional elements can be, the longer tracks like the 10 minute plus Hamarsha and Indelibility of Inequity get a bit repetitive for me after the halfway mark. Which is a shame considering just how strongly they open. As for the vocal issues, Dan is trying to jam way too many words into each measure. It definitely feels like he wrote out these epic, almost Homeric mythologies in advance, and then rather than tweaking them to fit the music just right, chose to belt out every single word regardless of whether they fit into any sort of logical cadence. Man, that's a mouthful. <laughs> but even with these relatively mild shortcomings aside, Ruin is a fantastic record from a very talented trio of musicians. It has some of my favorite Blacken performances of the year, and its emphasis on riffs should be a serious selling point to the guitar enthusiasts out there. Oh, I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. 
And that's it, y'all. Five albums that you do not want to miss from September. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite, and stick around because there's plenty more videos coming right after this one. I've also got Metal Tier List, full album reviews, the interviews on the podcast, you name it, we've got it. So plenty of reasons to subscribe if you have not already. Also in the description, you can find links to our social media, the email newsletter, Patreon, and subscribe star if you want to make that extra jump to becoming a full-on supporter, and MetalTrenches.com for even more content for you to check out. But that'll do it for this one. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.